Hello again from the Posh Lavish Digs of Mill City Roasters. I'm Steve Green. I'm Joe Morocco. Welcome. I'm responsible for everything and mine are the views of Mill City Roasters, as is this beautiful, fabulous new roaster. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. You're the crowd. <laughs> Yay! Okay, thank you. So we wanted to do a little extemporaneous video today because We've made a lot of changes on the production machine, six kilogram through 60 kilogram. And what that means is a lot of the development work we did on the control system for the new style 30 and 60K machines, a lot of integrated automated features have found their way into the production machines and they're pretty exotic. And I don't think a lot of that comes through effectively through the website in static pictures. Mm -hmm. So we want to activate the machine a little bit and show you what's really under the hood. Sounds good. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions. I've only gotten to roast on this a couple of times. This thing is brand new. So thanks for spending some time walking us through. Yeah. Okay. So all of the Mill City machines have, you know, we, we, when we started this, we were trying to get better coffee. My idea was I wanted to give the roaster more control and more options. All of our machine standard 500 gram on up feature the same uh, drum speed control, mm -hmm. same fan speed control. There's no dampers, there's no detents. We actually have two, count them, two fans on the roaster. <laughs> one for cooling, big honking fan for cooling, mm -hmm. and one slightly smaller variable speed fan for roaster exhaust. So you you can actually do back-to-back -back roasting. Yes. You a lot of control over that. And we also have a feedback loop with a magnahelic gauge so that um, you can watch the drum pressure change on the gauge as you turn the, the airspeed up or down. So it's it, it gives us a lot more control. Um, we've, we've always had data logging where we thought that maybe a guy should have bean temperature instead of just the analog gauge on the front of the machine, like mm -hmm. my first roaster. So we've got bean temperature probes, exhaust temperature probes, and we've even got an incoming air temperature probe in the rear, which allows us to kind of gauge our maximum heat in any gas setting as we increase our airflow. Mm -hmm. So there's a point in your airflow curve where when you turn up the air, you'll actually get more heat until the dilutive air overcomes the, the latent heat contained within the machine uh, and starts to decrease the temperature into the drum. So it's, it's a very useful thing when, you're, when we're hammering a, a very aggressive roast to, to understand how that um, responds at various fan speeds. Mm -hmm. As is, incidentally, it's kind of the same thing with drum speed. We really use drum speed not, at, not to um, modulate a rate of rise, but to change the conductive convective ratio of the roast for smaller batch sizes. Yeah, so you're not adjusting it while you're roasting, but right. maybe have a set for a different size batch. Yeah, you know, if you want to play around with that, that's fine. I have to my heart's content, and I'm not okay. doing that to drive the roast. I'm yeah. doing that to just control the optimal um, heat application for different batch sizes. So again, common features to the roasters. This machine is, is welded solid. The entire chassis is plate steel. It's about yay thick. And it's, that's actually double walled too. Yep. The chassis is double walled, gusseted, insulated throughout. It's an enormously heavy machine. It gives us tremendous thermal mass. It, on a, for a production platform, it allows us to start at the same place every single time with every single roast with a high degree of accuracy, very stable machine. Now, if we hadn't oversized the burners and the fans and the control, that would potentially be a sluggish machine. Definitely. It is not sluggish by any stretch no. of the imagination. There's more power on tap here than, than you will probably use. Although, when you're exhaust fan gets all crowded up, sometimes it's nice to have some extra horsepower to get through the roast day before you got to take the whole thing apart and tear it down and clean it. Now I've roasted on some sluggish machines in the past. And what we mean by sluggish is 
you make a change and then you don't see the, the matriculation of that change on your roast for quite some time, this machine, you can take a corner super fast while at the same time having all the benefit of all of that heavy metal. I haven't roasted a machine like that. It's, you know, when I first got my hands on one, I was surprised how good it was. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of wondered why everybody didn't do it that way. Mm -hmm. And I, low volume manufacturing, I, I built machinery in this country for 28 years before Mill City. Low volume machinery is typical hollow tubing and uh, sheet metal construction, screws and rivets and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, except for roasting, where it is a case that to a certain point, bigger and heavier is actually discernibly better. Yeah. So that's the thing. One of the reasons that people love those old UG22s is they were solid cast. Absolutely. Yep. They held a lot of heat. They were very stable, but then they also had big honking burners and they had pretty solid drums, uh, or not solid drums, but pretty uh, powerful fans. It gave the roaster, there was a lot of control on an old UG22. Mm -hmm. It was really a nice machine. And we kind of shamelessly plagiarized that. Thanks, Probat. <laughs> 1950 Probat, anyway. <laughs> but interestingly enough, I think the Probats have gone to welded construction for like their face plates. Yep. I think that's a thing for them too. So it's just a different way to do it. Um, a couple things that are very unique about this machine is the data logging, the sensor pass package, and the control system for the gas. So number one, just about everything that a user can operate in this machine ends up in our data logging platform. It, it's, it's data that is available to the roaster, mm -hmm. whether during or after the roast, right? So when, right. You're, when you're at the cupping table and you're trying to nug out, you know, what happened? Where did my acidity go? Well, I may want to go back and reflect on my, if I've got a problem with my rate of rise, maybe I go back and I check my drum speed. Yeah. Maybe I turn that graph on and take a look and see, did I bump that? Did I lose it? What happened? It's, it, I am not a huge fan of putting everything on the screen during the roast. I mm -hmm. kind of like to focus on the coffee a little more. Mm -hmm. But I, I, am, I am a huge fan of having that information available to me after the fact. Definitely. I, I know that a lot of us out there, there's a tendency of if we are tracking what gas adjustments we're making or what fan adjustments we're making, for instance, it's a tendency that we have to go back and try to repeat a roast by making the exact same gas adjustments. So we don't, we're not recording idea, it. by the way. Yeah, we're not recording this in order to uh, repeat the same adjustments that we made, but to see kind of where our head was at, see what we did to create the curve that we uh, had created so that we can make appropriate gas adjustments. It's good to have that data to go back on. Yeah, and in engineering, there's an idea that if it matters, you measure it. But the experience in engineering is kind of learning what matters. So, and this is interesting because I, you know, I watch the forums and I listen to people talk and, and I, you know, we discuss roasting back and forth. And there's, a, there's almost a problem in our industry a little bit where people who are fearful or they have some doubt about their ability to roast, maybe they're, they're not sure if their coffee is good or they're not sure if they're doing it right you know, they, they start to scapegoat their platform. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I'm a pretty good roaster. Joe's an excellent roaster. Derek is an exceptionally good roaster. The truth is any one of us can get really good coffee out of a popcorn popper Yep. because we understand coffee. It, it, this platform is designed with some ideas in mind. So there's this idea in the industry that, you know, if I don't know how to roast, maybe I should have a computer do it for me. Yep. Like a computer is going to give me the right answers. Like, okay, Google, what's my Maillard face for this Ethiopian Yurgachev? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's not a thing, right? Or, you know, maybe my coffee would be better if my graph was perfectly such and so. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a thing sometimes, but it's kind of not a thing sometimes too. And what happens is these thermocouples, these sensors, these packages, they're all great, but there is no sensor that actually measures and gauges the amount of latent heat in the machine. 
and there is no sensor that accurately reflects what's actually going on in the coffee. So we can only know that after the fact at the cupping table. That's right. What we try to do is get enough data to put the sensory cues into context, the green to yellow transition, the first crack, the sense in the trier, that is the path to exceptional coffee. So we talk in the class sometimes about, you know, Wall Street Journal says coffee is an $82 billion a year enterprise with a 16% growth rate. The growth rate in coffee is in quality. Absolutely, yep. It's people paying more money for a better thing. It is not, you know, the formerly sleepy, uncaffeinated 16% of the universe who's never had a cup of joe deciding to go to the local Starbucks. It's, hey, guys like me who used to think the path to a better cup was a fresh can of Folgers, now I'm, I'm, I'm paying more for a better thing. I've been reintroduced to coffee. So that is what we seek to do. We seek to educate you through this video. We seek to provide you with equipment that doesn't need to be modified in order to get a better thing. You don't need to go back and change a sprocket on your drum speed for your drum speed. You don't need to drill a hole for thermocouples. You don't need to, uh, what's, a, what's a mod they do all the time? Oh man, so many mods. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to follow the exact same roast profile every single time right. you roast a particular coffee in order to try to achieve that greatness that you had accidentally one time. Right. So with regards to automation, again, the, this is often sold as, hey, you know, you're super afraid that your, your coffee isn't as good as it could be. So, you know, maybe if you just magically accidentally find the right thing, you can replay that roast. Mm -hmm. It's like Spotify. You can endlessly loop the roast. You can, <laughs> you can hear uh, Victim of Love over and over and over. <laughs> right? Okay, maybe not like that at all. I don't know. <laughs> what I've tried to do is create a platform that makes people more efficient, makes people more effective, not replaced with a computer. I've tried to create a p platform that allows people to learn to, to develop their craft easier. Mm -hmm. You're a little less groping in the dark. You've actually got a, a path to follow to craft. That's what we try to do with the, the classes and with the machinery. It's kind of a unified theme for Mill City Roasters. All right, so some of the cool features that we have here are the sensors that are built into the system. And this is not necessarily automation. It doesn't start your roasting, but it tells the machine, hey, I've just put a batch into the roaster and it starts the timer. So if I open this up, it, this sensor tells the machine, you are now roasting coffee. So now there's a batch in roasting. Well, then when I open the door, this sensor tells the machine, you need to cool some coffee. So now my arms are rotating and the fan is on. If I want the arms to stop rotating, I can simply open this up and the fan stays on. I can close this and the arms rotate again. Now, obviously, once the coffee is cool, I don't need the fan on and I can drop the coffee out of the roaster. So I can turn this off by opening the door to my cooling tray. Now the arms are still rotating and the fan has turned off. If I wanna load coffee into my um, bin and I've got a full bin, I can simply stop those arms again by lifting this up and I can use this as a switch at the front of the roaster. Now the arms are on again, now they're off, so on and so forth. Pretty cool design. That's super neat. So one of the things is, this is a new iteration and it's, it's again, it's taken off of some of the development work we did for the automated charge and discharge function on the big machines, the, uh, the 30 and the 60K. Mm -hmm. And this is, at this point, this works and we're using it and we're testing it and it remains to be seen how much of this is gonna continue. Mm -hmm. We're, we're constantly trying to improve this experience. If this is too complex, maybe we'll strip it out. Maybe if people really want it, we'll add it back in. Yeah. And we can do automated discharge. We can, we can create cylinders 
and we, as we have for the big machines. We can do automated charge and discharge if we want to. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's any great burden for somebody to do this. No, especially on a smaller machine. Right. On a 60 kilo machine, it, it's a lot because you have a bigger door and bigger than that, you know, you'd almost have to. Yeah, something to think about. So let's come over and take a look at this gas system because this is kind of interesting. The control panel is very different now on the 6K. And what's happened here is we've got full data logging in either uh, in Artisan right now, possibly Cropster as of this morning. That's what I understand. I haven't seen it yet. Maybe they, maybe they got that right. I don't know. <laughs> um, all of our data, all of our sensors dump into a programmable logic controller, which outputs a, a Modbus um, communications protocol to our laptop. It's very easy to configure in Artisan. Nick's worked up a USB for each machine here that we can just we can program the um, configuration mm -hmm. very simply. So that's kind of cool. The one thing that is extremely unique about this particular machine, and it took literally years to figure this out. Now, arguably, I'm a slow. Maybe I'm just slow. I don't know. But this gas train system back here is very interesting. So one of the problems that you have is, you know, I build your roaster and I send it out into the world and one guy's got 20 inches of water column on tap and one guy's got eight. Yep. Right? So we need to be able to configure the roaster to get maximum output and maximum control. There is a relationship between gas pressure and pipe size. Mm -hmm. So the relationship is this. If I need cubic feet of gas at the burner head, so if I have a small pipe size, that at any given pressure, that's gonna allow less cubic feet to get through to the burner head. So what we're doing here is we're actually, we have a variable orifice on the butterfly valve. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it allows us to tune the butterfly valve very precisely for, for the amount of cubic feet of gas that we require at the burner head to get the roast profile that we want mm. without going so large that we sacrifice low end control. I got it. So we're just optimizing the orifice size in the butterfly valve itself mm -hmm. for maximum heat and maximum control. So you can adjust that butterfly valve for the amount of fuel that you have going to your roaster so that that butterfly valve stops at your max on your machine for your max in fuel. Is that correct? It's not so much that the butterfly valve stops. It's that the size of the opening through the valve is optimized mm -hmm. to pass enough cubic feet through at the top end to get you the heat you need, but not so far that you lose control down at the low end. That's awesome. It is actually kind of awesome. That's really cool. It is, it, it, uh, I, this is, this seems like a small thing, unless you've ever roasted on a machine where you're trying to decrease your heat and your two choices are too much heat or off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And there are a lot of machines out there like that where you a get down to like, like 20, that. 30%. Yeah. And you cannot adjust between zero and 20 or 30% at all. Right. Yeah. So what you end up doing is you overcome that with more air into the system. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that, a lot of times, if you've got powerful fans, either, well, let me rephrase that. If you don't have a powerful fan, you can't get enough air through the system. Mm -hmm. And if your fan is too powerful, you start sucking coffee up through your venting. Especially later in the roast when that coffee is super light. Right. And if you're relying on that airflow to pull the energy out of the roaster because you can't get your gas between zero and 20 or 30 percent, you're also changing the dynamics of the pressure in that system. And who knows how that's going to affect your roast at the same time. Yeah, the point is, is that airflow is not as repeatable as gas. Definitely. That's the issue. So there's, in terms of cupping quality, there's a much broader range of acceptable air application than there is heat application. Yep. The, 
the greatest impact on cupping is going to be the application of heat, which is the reason that I took a couple of years to find this system and install it in all of the big production machines to try to give you a, the best possible, um, to give you the greatest likelihood of the best possible outcome. Yeah, so you have fine tune adjustment with that fuel, which adds to greater control, greater repeatability, and hopefully better coffee. Yeah, and here's the thing too. I mean, this is, again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but I need people to understand the alternative to this is some microprocessor controlled system where you're flipping dip switches or you're turning these little teeny tiny pots trying to adjust this. And the problem with that is that computer will fight you mm. because the computer is trying to make maximum efficiency, which one would think, I mean, efficiency is always good, right? <laughs> well, no, it's really not. When, when efficiency, collides with your ability to get a better coffee mm -hmm. because heat application is the number one predictor of roast quality, mm -hmm. you got a problem. So we tried to solve this mechanically. Yeah. And listen, a lot of what I've done here is try to solve the problem mechanically. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not automating a bunch of stuff. I'm not, you know, thinking that, you know, we're going to design your roast profiles. I'm not thinking that you know, you're just gonna press a button like a trained monkey and get something great every time. None of that's real. And even the people, you know, the, the higher end coffee roasters, the people whose coffee you really wanna be drinking, they're not using automation like that. That's right. They're really not. I didn't know that for several years until I got around the country and I really started talking to them. Yep. So, and I, the truth is, the way that I found that out is they started telling me why they like my machines. Thanks, that's what, guys. That's why I like your machines. Good looking. <laughs> okay. So, beyond that, control system, there's no knobs here anymore. There's, my gas pressure is up and down. We press the button. My exhaust fan is up. Or down, we press the button and we've got, a, we've got a gauge here that shows you the hertz. My drum speed is up or down, again, hertz. And these numbers all feed back into the data logging if you want them to. Yep, and you can obviously, I don't know if this is obvious, but you can also hold this down and it will increase slowly. Right. Um, so you have very, very fine tuned control over that. Mm -hmm. It makes it, guys, you know, I'm an old guy. I kind of like gauges. I like needles. I, <laughs> the truth is I turn the digital thing off in my truck and I watch the speedometer. Truthfully, I don't really look at the speedometer either. I, <laughs> I'm probably the guy in the left-hand lane driving slow. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there is, in a production setting, when I'm chugging out a bunch of coffee on a specific profile, yeah, I get it. There is a value to, to some digital metrology. Uh-huh, yep. Right? There's a, there's an, there, there can be an advantage there. It, it's, not my, it's not necessarily what I want, but it's what a lot of people asked me to install, so we did. And this is the real thing. Again, as I'm, as I'm talking to people out in the world and I'm, I'm hearing the chatter on the internet Guys are constantly taking old machines and trying to rebuild them into this with mixed results. We really have done the work for you. We, this is our best effort. This is the best thing that we've done to date. I'm really proud of it and we're roasting on it and Derek's gonna show you how it runs. This is the machine right now that you really wanna get your hands on. Mm -hmm. This is it. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, we do invite you to come take a class with us. Come kick the tires on this machine. This machine is here for you to check out and get your hands on yourself. Uh, so don't just take our word for it. Come out and try it out. And uh, you know, all of the other smaller machines, smaller than the 6K, have the same features in terms of controllability. It's just you're not gonna get the same measurables on your screen, which is totally fine. You can always just 
jot down what you did for your gas. <laughs> we, what we find a lot of times is people that jump into the big machine, having not roasted on the small machines manually, kind of flounder. Yeah, it's true. It's, there's a lot to take in here, and it's, it's nothing that, you know, people do eventually adapt and overcome and figure it out. But in a lot of cases, you know, if you're just starting out, this is probably not your machine. This is a professional production. Uh, it's a piece of pro professional production equipment. This is what you want if you're looking for maximum quality and maximum production. And maximum control. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm done talking. I got to get out of here. All right, let's get out. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. <laughs>